Amal is a, basically a very large rod puppet. Um, and when we got our initial request from a uh, good chance to make a tall little girl, I said, well, it depends if you want to operate her with a truck or a, a, a great piece of machinery right. behind, uh, that's possible, but it's very high tech. And they said, no, we want low tech. And so I said, well, stilts then are the choice. And uh, we consulted Craig, Leo, who is our main stilt walker and colleague uh, in Handspring Various Productions. He said, yeah, he thinks he could do three and a half meters. And so that's what we went with. <laughs> The body is made of molded cane bound together, but the head, hands and arms and legs are made out of carbon fiber, which is the lightest, strongest material we could uh, learn to work with. Inside her body is somebody who supports her torso and her hip and controls her head while standing on a pair of stilts and her arms are operated by a left and right hand operator outside of her. And these three people have to think the same character. If the person inside on the stilts decides to turn left, the other two have to respond immediately as the arms would. So they've got to all think the same thought. We call that group mind. Um, when, when three people are saying the same thing, almost intuitively, when they click, the puppet becomes an incredibly powerful communicator and empathizer and I think that that's one of the things that's going to happen across Europe with little Amal. Yeah, this little girl is traveling through countries where she doesn't speak the same language as the audience. Um, so she's got to be able to express herself non-verbally. We've taken a choice not to give her a voice because she's so huge. What would a, a huge voice sound like? And so she will be talking through interpreters. She will whisper to people who will be able to pass her thoughts on to the audience. But she also talks through gesture and what we call micro-movement. Um, small shrugs, little, little movements of the hand, a sniff. Um, that's stuff that we've learned as a puppet company over the years uh, as a kind of a, a language, a body language that is uh, just as powerful as words. So in, in the building of her, um, all of the movement is very low tech, levers, uh, poles, but uh, she does have a little bit of high tech. She's got a tiny computer which operates her eyes, which means that with your thumb, you can, you can gesture with the eyes. There are a team of 10 or 12 puppeteers uh, who will alternate uh, with her. They're gonna get very tired and they'll need time off. And another thing that we've done is we've made three versions of her. So if something does happen along the way, uh, we've got um, two alternatives. Um, so those are two really important things. But in a way, we, we are doing something unprecedented. Um, it's part of the reason why we came out of retirement uh, and took on this project. Um, it's because it's such an important thing to do, such an exciting challenge. And for us, it was important also to come to terms with COVID and what COVID means. Our audiences are going to be outdoor audiences, so it's COVID appropriate in terms of theatre. The fact that a project like this exists is amazing um, because it's potentially a way in which all the countries across Europe can somehow become involved in what does it mean to welcome people who have left uh, their homes, which is not something you do lightly. This is a little migrant child who has been forced to leave her home and uh, who is seeking her mother. So the puppeteers really have to um, grow into who she is. Um, and that act of empathy coming into the puppet from the puppeteer is something that's quite often translated into uh, the audience. The audience really feels that, that child that the puppeteers have become. I can start to, to see the character that is building and um, the, when I see her fully fledged as a little girl walking in the street in a strange town, that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs>